Hello everyone, welcome to this exciting world of open source software. My name is Kannan Maudgalya, I am from IIT Bombay. I am going to give a talk on uh, Scilab. I hope that at the end of this talk, you will all migrate to using Scilab. So, let us get started. Here is the outline of my talk. I will not go through this right now. Let us get on with introduction. Let us start with uh, FOSS, which denotes free and open source software. The commercial software can be very expensive and heavy penalties if unauthorized software is used by industry. Our small and medium scale enterprises do not use any software. The reason is that commercial software is expensive and they are not aware of open source software. So, it is our obligation in academia to expose our students to use free and open source software or FOSS. If you do not do this, our small companies will not be competitive. I conclude this slide by saying there is no alternative to FOSS. Some more reasons why we should use FOSS. It is free of cost, it is affordable to industry, it allows learners to become better programmers. Imagine giving a car to somebody, a car mechanic and telling him not to open the hood. Open source software makes available the code, students can open them, see what is inside and so on, modify them, improve them and things like that. Open source software can also grow through collaborative contribution. We will explain this in this talk. So, should we not use proprietary software at all? I am not saying it. Use it when it is absolutely required, but wherever possible use open source software or FOSS. Problems with open source software are good documents are missing, lack of support and wrong impression about the quality. So, we are going to address all of these in particular, the first one documents, we are going to address them through spoken tutorial and textbook companion. We will begin with Scilab, which is a FOSS alternative to the popular software MATLAB. Scilab is an excellent open source software. It is a good substitute for MATLAB about 95 percent compatible with MATLAB and XCOS, which also comes free of cost with Scilab is a good alternative to Simulink. Scilab has excellent computational environment, it has Linpack, IcePack, Lawpack, it also has Docil, ODE Pack, etcetera. These are all amazing computational environments, which are also used in MATLAB. Because these are outstanding numerical computational engines, Scilab also is absolutely reliable. So, how reliable is Scilab? I will explain this with an example. CNES is a French aerospace corporation. It has helped launch many of our satellites. It launches Ariane rockets. There was a GSAT 16 launch by Ariane. Let me uh, click this. It takes it to this article, business line article, which says that India's communication satellite GSAT 16 was launched successfully. So, you can see here GSAT 16. on board Ariane space rocket from the spaceport of French Guiana. 
all right so what about it how is it connected with scilab so let's come here cnes relies on scilab for many critical calculations trajectory flight dynamics orbit etc here is a talk by martin of cnes on scilab so let me click this let me zoom it a little bit so here is the first scilab user conference that was held in 2009 and in that conference i talked about the national mission on education through ict i was the keynote speaker and lo and behold i talked about open source software the talk is available here in case you want to go through it but here we are interested in the talk by martin so let's click this it gives a summary of this you can read this let me zoom it a little bit now if i click this i'll get the pdf file okay it has come here we open that so you can see that martin talks about use of scilab for space mission analysis and flight dynamics activities and you can see that scilab is now widely used in cnes in various engineering fields such as telecommunications or of analysis navigation attitude control system analysis and dot 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 okay and he goes on talking about how scilab is used in cnes when we go to the end of this slide scilab is widely used within the cnes flight dynamics departments and so on so let's come back here so i always ask this question if cnes can use scilab for launching ariane rockets one of which launched our gsat 16 communication satellite using which possibly i am communicating i am connecting with internet if scilab is good enough for that purpose is it not good enough for your optimization problem for plotting a 3d graph or to solve fft or to solve a control problem of course it is good enough scilab is a great software and it is free and you will see many more nice things about it so don't leave any time until the end of this talk so let's go to the next slide there are few more examples of scilab use as given by the scilab website let me click this so they have given lots of case studies model reduction this is flight dynamics this is um, diesel engine let me just click this let's see what happens you can study more about it if you are interested in you can see many more examples here so if somebody says that if you learn only scilab you won't get a job don't believe them they have vested interest that's why they are telling that so let's come back here so i will give a brief demo of scilab for this purpose i have opened a scilab already it's very easy to uh, plot scilab so let me plot a 3d graph it produces amazing quality uh, plots you can create matrices easily so let me create a matrix a equals 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 0 so i've got this matrix so i want to calculate suppose 
determinant of A. I can calculate this if I want to calculate the eigenvalue of matrix using the command spec which stands for spectrum. I can calculate the eigenvalue. You can do lots of nice things. Let me give a brief demo of some of the other nice things available that come with Scilab. Let me click this here. That gives you a lot of demonstrations. Now, let us go to graphics. Let us go to 2D and 3D plots. So, here are some examples of 2D plots, some other plot. So, let me do it again. So, let us plot this. Let me close this. So, let us plot a 3D plot. Here it is. There are lots of nice features. I would want you to explore it whenever you have an opportunity. It is very easy because you can download Scilab directly from the website scilab.org, install it, use it and enjoy. So, I calculated uh, the determinant and eigenvalues, I showed some plots, I showed some demos. The problem as we discussed earlier with open source software is people do not know how to use, good documents are missing. So, I am going to explain one solution that we came up with called spoken tutorial. So, let us start with spoken tutorial. What is a spoken tutorial? It is a 10 minute long audio video tutorial on open source software to help improve employment potential. One of the nicest features of spoken tutorial is that it is created for self learning. Anybody can learn on their own even those who do not have uh, teachers, good teachers. If you are motivated, you can learn by yourself and the audio is dubbed into all 22 languages. I am going to show that and it also has an offline version which increased our reach 100 times and this is released as open source. You can download all our spoken tutorials from our website absolutely free of cost. Where is that website? I will show you shortly. 25 Scilab spoken tutorials are available here. Let me click this. Here it is. So, here are spoken tutorials on English. So, you can open any of them. For example, you can open vector operations. You can click this and play. So, Welcome let me go back. Spoken tutorial. You can also choose other languages. For example, instead of English, supposing you choose Hindi, let me open the same thing. Let us open vector operations again. If I play now, the video will be in English, but the vector audio will be spoken in tutorial Hindi. Aapka swagat hai. And we do this in all 22 languages as I told you earlier. Let me open Tamil. Let me play matrix operations. Let me play the play button. Let me press the play button. Vanakkam, matrix now it comes in Tamil. 
in the spoken tutorial so i would encourage you to go through this matrix try out the spoken tutorials keep the video and the scilab software side by side as i show you now let me open scilab here now you can see that video is on one side software is on the other side you listen to the video and try it out listen to one command at a time if it works go to the next command if it doesn't work rewind listen to it and try it again it will always work because spoken tutorials are guaranteed to be used by self learners this method is called side by side learning you open the video on one side you open the software on the other side and listen to one command at a time and practice until the video is completed notice that there is no need to log in for example if you come to my website it says login that is because i have not logged in so why do we have login so this is for creators this is for people who want to answer in the forum who want to ask questions in the forum and so on some of these things i'll show later but if you just want to listen to spoken tutorials you don't even have to log in as i told you it is created for self learning we dub this in all over 22 languages for example it's also available in sanskrit sanskrit happens to be one of our 22 languages i would encourage you to try the sanskrit dubbing and see how sanskrit dubbed tutorials sound many universities use spoken tutorials as moocs moocs of course you know stands for massive open online course you can see a list of universities that use spoken tutorials as moocs i have a list here if i click this it takes me to the spoken tutorial website you can also access this by clicking coming to our website here spoken tutorial website academics moocs acceptance that's what i clicked to get this now you can see various universities doing it at the end of it there is a second page let me go here second page and i want to go to this university this is the first university one of the uh, largest universities to accept scilab as moocs let me click this this university has about 200 colleges affiliated to it so let me click this let me make this slightly smaller so you can see the web page clearly okay spoken tutorial as moocs in ece department so let's uh, see the attachment and let's search for scilab let's search for spoken tutorials so here it is it's a spoken tutorial they have given our website and they say that the following observations are made in respect of the practical paper and they say that is part of the design lab course let me come back here the spoken tutorial team provides certificates based on an online test it is made available at a very affordable prices if the cost of a certificate can be as low as 20 25 rupees for a college that uses this resource extensively it's a fixed cost per college per year irrespective of the number of students it has so i would encourage you to try this out so let me go to another solution that we came up for this uh, problem 
that good documents are missing. That solution is called textbook companion or TBC in short. So, let us see more about it. Students are good in coding, but not documenting. But India has about 10 lakh engineering students every year. Can we use these students to create documents? We need documents, we are short of documents. Unfortunately, students do not like documentation even if they are good in coding. So, how do we solve this problem? We have lots of students who can do coding, but we want documentation. So, we decided to address this by solving the inverse problem. What is the inverse problem? Ask the students to write code for existing documents. Okay? For students, of course, textbooks are the best documents. So, we said ask them to write Scilab code for solved examples of standard textbooks. Notice this solved examples, we are not talking about unsolved problems, solved examples, good textbooks give every step, step by step explanation and solution. One can implement it in Scilab and verify the Scilab code line by line and any good student should be able to contribute. So, this is how we started. If they do it for all solved examples of a book, you get one textbook companion and we pay rupees 12,000 rupees for one textbook companion. As honorarium, we also give certificate, we also give a link for it. As a matter of fact, there is one student from IIT Madras, he wrote to us saying that thanks to this textbook companion, he got an internship in a Japanese company. So, he was very happy about it. Funding for this comes from the funds, the grant that we received from the National Mission on Education through ICT MHRD, which has been very generous in supporting this activity. So, I would like to invite all students to benefit by this, to contribute to this and also to use this. How does one use it? I am going to explain it shortly. Okay. 1000 college students and faculty contributed. These students came from all over India, all parts of India. 600 textbooks were covered and 70,000 examples were coded. If you assume that there are 100 examples in a textbook, then there will be 60,000. Some textbooks have actually more than 100 examples. So, we have 70,000 examples coded. You can download these textbook companions for offline use. So, let me click this. So, this is scilab.in on the left hand side. So, this is the website that we have created and we support at IIT Bombay. By the way, the software Scilab is not created by us. Scilab is, in fact, we have given a disclaimer also that it is, um, of course, we have said that it is a trademark of INRIA and um, uh, Scilab Enterprises and it has been now bought over by a company. And um, I will show the link for that here. But let us come here, let us come back to this page and let us go to textbook companion project and you have something called completed books. When we click this, you can see that there are 594 books that have been completed. So, it has, if I just scroll down, you will see that there are indeed 594 books, here it is. It is possible to get books according to specialization. So, let me do that. Instead of choosing all categories, let me choose electrical engineering for example and in that 
let me choose there are more here signal processing. Now, if you go through this you see that in signal processing alone there are 17 books. So, this is a very popular book Prokis and Manalakis DSP. So, let me click this and it says that download codes. Notice that we are not giving a book, we are only giving scilab code to understand that code you need the book. As a result this is a true textbook companion, it only gives the scilab code, it does not give the book. We cannot copy the book and distribute that will be a violation of copyright, we do not do such illegal things. So, here if you click this you can download the entire scilab code. If you click here you can get the pdf, let us click this and see what it has. So, it is downloaded here. So, here you are this is created by professor Sintal Kumar from IRTT in Erode, he is a college teacher and let us go down. So, it has all the examples by chapter, you also have it in terms of example number. So, for example, if you want to say exponential decreasing signal, example 2.1.09, let me click this, there it is example 2.1.09. So, you can reach this directly and notice that it has code after code after code which is not given in the book. What is given in the book is not reproduced here, as a result there is no copyright violation at all. As a matter of fact, it is the other way around, we are helping authors of books by giving scilab code. There may be authors who may not have given any code with their book but we have given scilab code and we have given it for 600 close to 600 books in fact 594 as of now and there are some more books in pipeline those are undergoing reviews revision and so on and so forth okay let me just see we have anything else here ha huh, we can download the code for an entire book or a chapter let me show you so, here I showed how to download a PDF version, let me close this. We are back in the download course that we saw earlier. So, instead of download PDF, if you download here you will get all the scilab code as a zip file. Instead you can say that let me download it for only let us say frequency analysis of signals and systems. Let me click this and in that if you click this you will download that chapter as a zip file, but you can say that let me download it for only plotting discrete time Fourier transform. So, it says that reconstruction SCE. So, let me see what happens if I click this. So, it comes here, let me see if I can open it. Let us see what happens if I open this. I can show it in finder, here it is. So, let me right click it, run with scilab it says. Okay, let me try this. So, here it is, okay, let us clear the console, sampling frequency in hertz, let us put uh, 50. Let us open discrete time signals and systems, chapter 2. Let us choose an example, let us say 
exponential increasing decreasing signal. Here is the code. So, I do not have to download the entire book. I have I can choose a chapter. If I click here and download, I will get the zip file for that chapter only. Instead, I can say that I do not want it for the whole chapter, there are too many things I get confused. I want scilab code for only one example. So, I have selected this. So, let me click this. Let me show in finder. Okay, I ran it, you see the output. Okay. So, it is possible to do that. Let me close this. So, as I told you earlier, you can download the code for an entire book or a chapter or an example. So, which is very useful because you can just go to the example that you like, download only that code run it and test it. Now, I am going to give a demo of Scilab Cloud on Garuda. So, here is the link. Let me click this. So, let me demonstrate it. Let me choose once again electrical engineering. I will choose control systems. I will choose Co frequency domain analysis, see how it is organized. First the main category, then subcategory in that what is the name of the book and what is the chapter and what is the example. So, let me select that example. I want to choose body plot. The moment I select it, I get the code here. So, this is written by some student one of your friends from across the country. So, let us execute this. So, it gives the body plot, you can download it if you want. Let us close it and here is the result. Let me zoom it a little bit. Okay, you can actually see that. Now, I am going to ask you a quiz. Suppose, I increase the gain of this transfer function. Let us go to 5000. Okay. That is right, you can actually edit this page. So, I have changed this from 2500 to 5000. Now, if I do that, what will happen to gain margin and face margin? I want you to note down, gain margin is 14, face margin is 31. If I increase the gain, what will happen for this system? Okay, let us go ahead. So, this goes to Garuda Cloud, which is hosted in uh, Bangalore by CDAC. Let me close this. Yes, if you guessed it correct, the margins will come down. 14 has become 8 and 31 has become 17. So, it is possible for you to try out all the 70,000 examples on the cloud. So, how do we use this TBC as a documentation? What do I mean by that? Supposing you want to know how to use Scilab for fast Fourier transform, because you have it in your course. So, open the textbook and there must be an example that shows how to solve fast Fourier transform, how to implement fast Fourier transform. So, that example is given. You go to the textbook companion in Scilab. As 600 books are covered, most likely your textbook also is covered. You go to that chapter, that particular example and open the Scilab code. It tells you how fast Fourier transform is done. Okay, what do we do if your book is not covered? You propose. You propose that 
or you ask a smart classmate in your class to do this for you and that person can create a textbook companion on that book and the problem is solved. Okay? It can be used as a documentation as I mentioned. It can be used for what if studies like I mentioned for example, like we did for example, increase the gain by 2. You may want to reduce the friction factor by 10th. You may want to change the bandwidth of some communication channel and so on and so forth. So, it is very easy if you are a faculty member, you are teaching the class, just project this and then you can just do this um, online. Of course, you need internet connection. If you do not have internet connection, use the offline version that I showed you a little while ago. It is of course, useful for students also. You want to understand how a particular topic is covered, you want to improve it. So, you can do that. As a matter of fact, I believe that this alone that is the textbook companion alone is useful to most of the 40 lakh engineering students who are in our colleges at any time. Right? So, for them Scilab is more than enough. It is only for a very small fraction of the students who may want some extra things which may not be available in Scilab, they might say they want to use some other software. My question to you is, so for that 1 percent of the students, should you use some other software that will tax all the 99 percent of the students? That is why I say that use Scilab wherever possible and that Scilab is good enough for the 99 percent of the students like we demonstrated. For the remaining 1 percent of the applications, use whatever software whether it is open source or commercial whatever it is but do not impose that commercial software on the 99 percent of the students who can get by with Scilab. It is also true for industry. What, how many companies solve earth shattering problems all the time? Very rarely do they solve such problems. For most of them, what is available in Scilab is more than enough and it is absolutely open source. All companies can also use Scilab absolutely free of cost. And of course, this is useful to people all over the world. Imagine this is something created by us, by our students, by who are funded by our taxpayers, made available to the whole world and that is the beauty of open source software. You create a good product and share it and lots of people can uh, benefit by that. Just like Scilab was created by somebody and they left it as open source for all our students to benefit, we also reciprocate in this manner. There is another very nice thing that we have created on top of this textbook companion, code search. Let me show you, when we click this link, if you click this, it comes here, once again it is in scilab.in website. How did I reach here? Search. TBC code search, this is what I find. So, how do I use it? Well, you need to know the name of the command. How do I locate the name of the command? I do a Google search. For example, I wanted to set a problem in partial fraction in Scilab. I had forgotten the command. I had forgotten the syntax. So, I said, partial fraction Scilab. So, the very first link is pfss. So, I know the command name. I found the command name. Now, how do I find examples? It has, I have had many bad experiences of trying to get a working example in the past and I do a Google search. I get lots of hits. 100,000 hits, but not a useful one. I had to really search one after another to find a working code, but we have solved that problem in our code search here. Remember the command is pfss. So, I come here and I search pfss. 
when I search, it says 140 results found. Where are these from? Remember, I told you that there are 70,000 examples that have been coded by your classmates, students across the country. They have made available out of the 70,000 examples, 140 of them have used PFSS. The first one is by this uh, circuit analysis book. So, let me go down. Here is a book by Ashok, here is a book by Babu, here is a book by Salivahanan, here is a book by Manke. You keep doing it until you like a book that is displayed. Here is a book by Kofnaur, which I used when I was a student. I said, hey, you know, I have used this book. Let me view this example. It immediately takes me to the Scilab on cloud that we have seen before. This is example 4.2 in that book. And if you see here, notice that PFSS is here. So, all I have to do is to execute and I get the result. Only the denominator is displayed, that is because after numerator there is a semicolon. Let me delete it. Let me run it and I get numerator also displayed. You can see that partial fraction is with the denominator s minus 2, this is s plus 1, s minus 1 and so on. So, if I do not like this, I can modify it, rerun it, I get an example and so on. So, this is extremely useful for faculty members if they want to set problems for lab exam, final exam, whatever it is and you can do this for all kinds of applications. Of course, it will also help you to identify examples for the command that you want to find out. So, let us go ahead. Now, I am going to talk about lab migration. So, do you want to migrate your lab to Scilab? We will help you. State your experiments, you code them in Scilab, we will give honorarium and a certificate. We will also host them on our website so that you can give a link for that in your resume or we can get your problem solved by experts, Scilab experts who may be your colleagues in some other college. We have already migrated more than 60 labs. Let me click this. Once again, it takes us to Scilab.in. On the left hand side, you see this lab migration project and completed labs that has been clicked. So, here are all the labs. Let me zoom it a little bit. Okay, it has come here below. Here are the examples. So, as a matter of fact, at this point, we have 73 labs that have been migrated. Now, if you click this, let us say control of electric drive. So, once again, it looks the same. It looks same as before, they are like the textbook companion. If I click this, I will get the PDF file. If I open it, here it is. So, this is done by Priyan Patel from this college. As we go down, you can actually see the experiments. Speed torque, if I click this, it takes you to whatever. So, here are all the problem statement, solution and so on. So, let me close this. Let me come here. No, let me come here. Let me go back. So, these 73 labs that have already been migrated may solve all your problems. You can immediately migrate your lab. In case a small fraction of your lab is not covered, go and add them and propose and you get a certificate, you get honorarium and more importantly, you can include this in your resume. So, let me go up. Of course, if I zoom it slightly less, you will see both of them in the same page. So, here are 
lapse in progress. So, there are 26 laps in progress. Okay. I encourage you to participate in this, migrate your labs and also help others migrate their labs to Scilab. We are also improving Scilab toolboxes. We can call all octave right now from Scilab. We have a great optimization toolbox already available. I am going to show some links. We are we have developed a signal processing toolbox, image processing toolbox. We are working on a control systems toolbox. We have made a lot of progress in identification toolbox and also from uh, Scilab to see how does one go. We have a toolbox on that. Where are they available? Available as Scilab atoms. Optimization toolbox is already released. So, if I click this, it will take you here. This is available on uh, atoms dot scilab dot org page and here it is FOSSE optimization toolbox. You can see that this has been downloaded 6500 times out of which 5500 are for this version, probably about 1000 for previous versions. So, I would encourage you to download try it. Other toolboxes to be released shortly. The code is available here. By the way, how did I get this here? By clicking FOSSE Scilab toolbox. Remember that we are in Scilab.in, FOSSE Scilab toolbox, which is what I clicked. If I click it, I get this. You can actually access them. And where is the code available? The code is available here. Let me click this. Okay, it, it's in, it is in that page. So, if I click this, you will get the code for FOSSE optimization toolbox. It says that installation instructions, installation instructions, documentation, example and so on. Here is the source code of this toolbox. Okay. So, let us proceed. Here is a a uh, paper that we wrote, it appeared in an IEEE control conference. Let us move ahead. We want your participation to add more functions to Scilab toolboxes. We are also creating an XCOS cloud. Let me give you a, the link for that. So, this is in xcos.fossy.in commonly used blocks. For example, as I told you, it is still under progress. You can click this, you can move things, you can connect them, you can simulate them and so on. I would want you to explore this. Help us improve it. You may be very good in coding. Please join us. You may have lots of XCOS code. You want to try them out, try them out, find the bugs, inform us. We will be very happy to have you as our partners. We have Scilab forums to answer your doubts. If you have a general doubt, come to FOSSE forum. You can click this. If you want to see the previously posed questions, you can see them. You can search, sorry, forum. You can see a lot of questions on Scilab. So, let us click this FOSSE forum. It takes you to the page where Scilab questions are there. You can actually go to any of them. For example, moving average. So, there is a question and there is an answer and so on. Remember, I have still not logged in. I have not logged in. In other words, to view the previously posed questions, login is not required. But if you want to post a question, then you have to register and log in. If I click this, if I say ask a question, it will come and say login. 
and if you have not registered, you have to register. Okay. That is only if you want to ask a question or to answer a question posed by somebody else, you have to register login. Okay. So, this is FOSSI forum, this is for general doubts and there are lots of examples, there are lots of questions already asked and answered, some of them may be useful to you. Our experts are here to answer your questions and of course, if lot of people start answering questions posed by their colleagues in other colleges, then we can have instantaneous response. That is the beauty of once again open source forums. What if you have a question on Spoken Tutorial? You are going through let us say uh, for example, matrix operations at 3 minute 35 seconds you had a question, what was shown in the spoken tutorial did not work or you wanted to do something related to what is shown at 3 minute 35 seconds. So, how do you do that? So, for that we have a spoken tutorial forum, let me click this. So, you can come here. So, here you can actually search, let me go to Scilab for example, now these questions, so the FOSS is Scilab, what is the tutorial general, this is installing, X course, getting started and so on. For every question at what minute? So, for example, I told you 3 minute 35 seconds means you will say between 3 and 4, you will choose that. Second, you will say between 30 and 40 second, you will ask the question and maybe somebody will answer. Here are the previously posed questions and answers. Okay. Here is something Scilab code question asked between 16 and 17. So, here is somebody who has asked this question, it is not working and here is the answer. Okay. So, I would like you to uh, post your doubts and also answer the doubts posed by other people. Scilab runs on many systems. This is our Scilab implementation on the world's lowest cost tablet Akash. You can see the same 3D plot coming here. That means, you can run, you can make Scilab run on almost any machine. Here is Scilab on our 10,000 rupee laptop, which has lots of amazing software already installed. You can see that when I click this here, I get software organized as college level software, school level software and so on. In college level software, programming environment. MATLAB like software, chemical process simulation and so on. Under this, you have so many things, Octave, R, Scilab and so on. So, Scilab comes with this machine also and this laptop is in the market now. How do you find out more about this laptop? From my LinkedIn post, if you click this, how do you find out more about this? From my LinkedIn post. Here is the write up of this. There is a video that explains the research that went behind this work and this brochure gives the specs of this laptop. And then the website of our laptop is here. You can get more about it over here. Finally, we will come to FOSSI free and open source software for education. Here is the logo for FOSSI, here is the logo for spoken tutorial. What do we do in FOSSI? We promote FOSS in a big way. What does FOSS stand for? Free and open source software. Here is the link. If you go through this, you will see that we have lots of things. You can go to scilab.in through this, python here, eSIM here. ESIM is for electronic circuit design. 
Osdag is for steel structure design. DWSIM is an amazing chemical process simulation software. Open foam is computational fluid dynamic software. Open modelica is for solving a collection of differential algebraic equations, differential equations, algebraic equations or combinations of these, war tools and so on. There are lots of nice things here, all of them are open source. We are also beginning to add spoken tutorials on R. In many of them we have textbook companions, lab migration and actually many more nice things. I would like you to go through this, explore this page and find something very useful and I would also encourage you to join us. To conclude, I would encourage you to learn Scilab, also contribute to it. Visit the websites I have shown, use other FOSS that we promote, partner with us, use commercial software only when absolutely required. Our project as I mentioned has been funded by MHRD through two missions, National Mission on Education through ICT and Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching. We are very grateful to MHRD for funding our activities and for helping us pay students honorarium. Uh, we have paid honorarium to thousands of students uh, who participated in this activity. Without the contribution of students and faculty members from across the country, we could not have um, achieved so much. In fact, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our contributors. I would like to thank you for staying with me. It has turned out to be a longish lecture. I hope you do not mind it. Thanks for joining. Goodbye and Jai Hind.